all right guys so welcome back to kins tv it's all about entertainment guys i'm um, basically as you can see right here this is kins tv guys this program is sponsored by a restaurant inside vista square and also smart base cargo smart base if you want the best door-to-door -door service cargo from dubai to ghana they are not just say it's smart base cargo hi hi how are you i'm fine you thank you darling you're looking beautiful thank uh, you i try uh, <laughs> are you from ghana yeah i'm which, from ghana which part of ghana are you from i'm from the bunahafu region wow yeah what's your name i'm jacqueline echampon but on tiktok i'm Eisen 911 all right let's look at Eisen. Eisen 911 mm -hmm. who is really Eisen? who's Eisen? Eisen is a free-minded person who doesn't take bullshit but apart from that i'm a i'm a free person Eisen is Eisen. Mm. Mm. all right Eisen. Eisen, how long have you been in dubai i've been in dubai for two years now two years yeah wow wow all right let's look at this um Eisen, what really inspired you or motivated you to travel to uae um should i say i'm that person that believes in making it yourself in life mm. a self-made person so i think that's what motivated me to come to uae wow yeah so basically what really 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 brought you to uae um, I, should I say I was running away from something? So I think that also was the main reason why I came to UA. What were you running from? <laughs> um, before I left Ghana, I lost my mom and she's like a sister, everything to me. So I was a little bit de depressed. Mm. So I just wanted to leave Ghana. Okay. And it was a wish that um i will travel one day so i guess her wish came true wow so okay let's look at your growing up in ghana how was it like um, i actually didn't grow up in ghana um i grew up in nigeria and at the age of seven years or eight years that, that was when we came back to ghana Okay, so you grew up in Nigeria. Yeah. So can you speak a bit of Nigeria? No, 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 no. I Why? can't. Why? Why? <laughs> I can't because my mom is always speaking English with me, so and I wasn't allowed to mingle with kids um, around the block. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So you you, you spent some school time in Ghana or Nigeria? Yeah, I've, I've been. I was schooling in Ghana. Yeah. What school was that? Um, my primary, um, I was schooling in John William Montessori at Tano, so. Okay. And I completed um, senior high school. Um, my senior high school was basically two schools. I went to Sewanyako a little bit, then completed in the Pentecostal school in around. Um, um, is it Swami or Sofola? Yeah, around that place. Kumasi, right? Yeah, Kumasi. Oh, okay, all right. All right, um, let's, let's look at the system in Ghana. The system, how do you see system in Ghana now? It's not bad, it's okay. Mm. The system is okay. Yeah. All right, so um, basically, you already told me through your mom and all that yeah. and you came to UAE and mm -hmm. all that all right so let's look at UAE you've been in UAE for two years how do you see UAE UAE yeah hey UAE <laughs> it's somehow stressful fun sometimes you get depressed sometimes you 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 are happy sometimes you are over the moon it's it's something else UAE is crazy mm yeah all right so have you started working in uae yeah i'm working <laughs> this is my workplace this is your workplace yeah all right so basically how do you how did you get in contact to come to uae 
Okay, it was through a friend, mm. a best friend of mine. I talked to her that I wanted to travel out of the country in Ghana. So she was like, okay, I know of someone who is in UAE. So I want to introduce the person to you. So through, through my friend is how I got to UAE. Okay. Yeah. And then looking at the system, the system in Ghana and UAE, has it favored you in any way? Let me say, one thing is, Ghana will pamper you, but UAE will give you the experience. So, um, should I say, it hasn't been all that rosy, but UAE has made me strong. Mm. UAE has put me in a position where I never thought I would be. Talking of the position, you would be, um, what are some of the works you've done in the UAE? Oh, I've done housekeeping. That was the first job I did actually. I did housekeeping. I've cooked and sold. I've sold, sold, sold. I've been doing sales. I'm doing sales now. So those are the jobs I've done here. Okay, so let's say comparing whatever you did back in Ghana. Mm -hmm. To Dubai, what, what the value check the value rate and let's see. Okay, I think UAE is okay in terms of having the money and those stuff is okay, but um, feeling comfortable and being yourself, I think home is far better. Home is far better, yeah. But so, in Ghana, what were you doing in Ghana? What work, what are some of the work you, you, you did in Ghana? I had my own cosmetic shop, I was selling, um, doing my own business. Mm. So let's, let's look at this aspect. You doing your own business back home in Ghana and leaving your own personal business, traveling outside your country, working for somebody. How is the experience like? Working for someone puts pressure on you, makes you understand some certain things that you wouldn't understand when someone is working for you. Um, it gives you different types of experiences and exposure, so I think they are far different things. They are far different things? Yeah. So do you like the life you are living now in the UAE? Mm, yeah, let me say yes, yeah. So that means you are trying to tell me that whatever you are doing back home, <laughs> even though you are doing it for yourself, it's not something that you really like doing it. I really like doing that. Like I said, UAE has trained me. Mm. UAE has made me who I am, like a better person far more than how I was at home. Not in terms of getting money or um, working for myself or feeling comfortable. It has made me grown as a woman. It has groomed me. Okay. All right, let's, let's come to that aspect grooming you to be a perfect woman can you explain a bit about that um, it has made me understand some certain things in life because back home you pay rent for like three years here you pay rent a month back home you have family and here you don't have family members to help you out everything is on your shoulder and if you have family members to send money to, you would send them money. But in Ghana, you would collect money from your family, your parents, you know, you understand what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, I think you is, has made me a woman that I am, the woman that I am now. Okay, all right, that's good anyway. Um, so basically, let, let's look at, um, you being a lady coming all the way from Ghana to UAE and um, you having no family right here but you're still trying to survive. Um, let's, let, let, let's look at let's look at work aspect. Does it favor ladies, women per se, well, Africans? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Mm. Yeah. What's your reason? My reason is because 
the works here, the jobs here, most of them are for men. It's just less of it that women can do. Yeah. All right. So let's let's look at this aspect because uh, most of the time, um, all I hear is. Uh, African ladies or let's say West African ladies are always into nanny jobs and all that. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion about that? Well, I don't have anything, um, I don't see anything wrong with a woman doing a nanny job. But it depends on the family she's working with. If you feel like they are good to go, why not? Mm. I feel like it's okay. Mm. Do you think women outside country suffers a lot? What? Do you think women outside the country suffers a lot? Mm. Or do you think it's not necessary for them to travel? It's necessary for you to travel. Okay. It's very necessary for you to travel because it makes, it's, it opens you up, like it gives you the closure to know what is going on outside the country and it exposes you to a lot of things. I don't think women outside, well, outside is very difficult. It's not all that rosy, but I don't think it's that difficult that can kill you mm. in a way. Okay, all right. So would you prefer all the ladies back home to travel out of the country? No, if you don't want to travel, you don't want to travel. You must have a tangible reason to travel and you must, know what you are going out there to do if you feel you are comfortable at home just stay there if you want to travel don't let anything stop you just come mm. all right that's a good um answer there all right guys let's go for commercial break why yeah bye back to us Tadi boy, mabu bofu funu mawashi. I go by the name in Shaba Kojo. I mean a queer restaurant, Dubai. Charlie, the food it tastes good. Hi, so welcome back from that quick commercial break. I'm right here with Aisin, baby. Aisin. Yes. Why is you too? Hey, easy. All right. So Aisin, we were talking, and um, let's let's look at um. Still, I'm on ladies because um, you are a specific. I mean, a specific person that I would want to ask this question. Okay. And I know you can give me a tangible answer to that. Let's look at um, relationship aspect here in the UAE. How how do you see relationship aspect here in the UAE? It's sweet and sour. A bit of explanation. It's sweet and sour. Um, it's crazy. Should I say it's crazy? It's crazy. It's, um, when you read, when you meet the right person, I think it's fun, it's loving, it's everything. But when you don't read, meet the right person, it's crazy. Have you been a victim of any? Mm, I wouldn't say I was a victim. No, I wouldn't say. I was a student. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Being a student, how was it like? Mm, it taught me a lot. It really taught me a lot. It made me wiser. Everything that goes on in this country with me makes me wiser and takes me to the next level. Okay. What do you think men are scam? Dubai guys? Mm. Mm. Not really. Are you sure? Yeah. Have you ever dated anybody here? Oh. Not really. Okay. Are you planning? Huh? Are you planning? Yeah. I'm planning. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh good i'm planning you're planning yes i'm planning all right um because well, the, re the main reason why i'm asking this is because um most people most ladies out there say that um, men in uae are scammers and all that because when they get what they want they just let go do you think it's true 
I wouldn't say when they get what they want, they go. We all wanted something. We all got it. The other person got tired and he left or she left. It doesn't mean he's a scam. You know, um, before you get into a relationship, one thing I've learned is you need to know the person you are getting into with, the person you are getting involved with carefully because I wouldn't say they are scammers, it's just that they pretend a lot. They are just pretenders. They can't pretend to be what you want them to be. And then after that, that's it. So I don't think they are scam. They just come to know who exactly you are because a lot of people are on these social media apps. They see you doing live, talking to people. They just want to come closer and know the type of person you are. Okay, so when they come, you, you, you are in the right position to get to know the person before you get in a relationship with them. So I don't think they have come. You, you spoke about TikTok yeah. and social media. Yeah. Uh, I've seen you are very active on that side. Mm, not really. You sure? Yeah. All right, let's look at TikTok. You're on TikTok, right? Yeah. You, I said 99. I 911. 911. Yeah. <laughs> what? All right, I said 911. One, 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 one. Right? 911. 911. Emergency number. Police number. 911. Uh huh. All right, I said now, let's look at TikTok. Do you think people find love on TikTok? Yeah, of course. Definitely. Mm. They do. Have you found one there before? I didn't find a guy on TikTok. I found a guy on Facebook until now. Those who check my status will confess to it. Till now, he's out of my life, but we are still close, close friends. I call him Ken because he's my Ken. He's, he, has, he has been with me like too thick and thin. The cosmetics I was selling in Ghana, he was the one who was bringing it to me and like, he's, uh, he's everything. Mm -hmm. So people find true love. On the social media? Yeah. Do you think it lasts? It lasts. This guy I'm talking about has been in my life for like seven to eight years now. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I went searching but I, uh, I've never had one there before. Maybe your love is not, your, your soulmate is not on social media. Are you sure? Yeah. But one thing is, I don't believe in long distance relationships. Mm. It works. You sure? Yeah, it works. Okay, give me a bit scenario about long distance relationship. What do you understand when someone says long distance relationship? One. If you want to be in a long, um, long distance relationship, you must have patience, trust. That's all. That's the two things for me. That's the two things that worked for me. What do you classify as long distance relationship? Uh, it's a distance that the, the both of them are far from each other. How far? <laughs> like so far. Six hours or five hours flight journey. <laughs> should, it be, should it be only flight? No, or maybe three hours journey from Accra to Kumasi. That's also a long distance. Or from Sharjah, or from Dubai to Abu Dhabi, anywhere. Sure. Yeah, anywhere. <laughs> or maybe from Union to Dera. Is that to a long distance relationship? Have you been in any? I've been, I told you. Uh. This guy I met on Facebook, he was in France, I was in Ghana. Oh. Yeah. So, so, so it's all about trust? It's all about trust. No emotions attached? Emotions will be attached, but you use your brain. Mm. Using your brain, idiot, nothing. Okay. How do you use your brain when someone is far away from you? Imagine you are in that... Because you maybe know. that person, you've, not, you've never met the person before. Mm. Some of them are scam, mm. frosters. Mm. So you use your brain. Do you have to be faithful to someone you never know? Yes. 
Yes, you have to. For how long? It depends. It depends of it, it depends on the conversations you guys are having and the personality the person you think you are talking to has. So you can be faithful. Alright, that's cool. Um, let's look at the cost of living in Dubai. Uh -huh. how, do, how do you see the living in Dubai? How, how do you see it like? If in fact if if I didn't come to Dubai, I never knew I was this rich. Really? Yeah. It's very expensive. Ha! Dubai is fucking expensive. It's, it's expensive. Very expensive. If you want to live a comfortable life in Dubai, it's expensive. Even a normal life is expensive. So expensive. What makes it expensive? Your rent is expensive. You can feel like. 3,000 Ghana cities a month for a rent. Really? The cost of going in and out with a metro, taxi is expensive. <laughs> Everything is expensive. Looking at how sweet, sexy, beautiful as you are, what, what, what do you, I mean, um, do you expect something lower than that price? Hey, God. Mm. Uh, about me mm. it's normal it's not that expensive it's okay so how much do you pay how much do you pay for your room i pay how much is it i share it with um, my roommates okay. i um i pay 650 and she also pays 650 so in all is 1300 dirhams okay yeah and you're comfortable yes mm. Are shining. <laughs> Can leave me alone. All right. Um, let, let's let's look at the cost um, of living in Ghana and mm -hmm. Dubai. You understand? Mm -hmm. You thinking that maybe Dubai is expensive? Do you think it's the same back in Ghana? Cause Ghanaians are complaining. It's never the same. Oh. Never. It can never be the same. No, it can never be the same. Are you sure? Never. So if they are complaining, we are dying. You are dying here. <laughs> you are dying. They cannot. Ah, you cannot compare. It's never. They cannot compare. It's never. Mm -mm. Really? But looking at rich as you are now, because now I mean, I, I mean, I can see you as, let's say, the top in the top five. I'm going to give you three. <laughs> I'm not rich. Are you sure? My roommates will say, send 10 plus 10 plus nothing. My roommates say, packaging. I'm not rich. You are packaging. It's packaging. <laughs> but it's not a fake life. It's not a fake life. This is hustling. But you package yourself. I heard you don't buy day to day stuff. Who said that? I had. I buy day-to-day -day stuff, but I collaborate them, mere collaboration <laughs> with other brands. I buy day-to-day -day stuff a lot. But I heard you always buy Shin. Oh no, not really. I don't normally buy Shin. Okay, fine, I buy Shin. I'm always on Shin, but I buy stuff on day-to-day um, -to -day too. Even day-to-day -to -day has Shin there, so. What I see. What's the most expensive dress you've ever bought? Mm. Here. In your life. Uh, I've not got into that too. All of them are on range. It's the same range. What's the highest? Um, maybe hundred gram. In your entire life. Uh, is it in Ghana or here? Plus Ghana or in here? In your entire life. <laughs> Okay. Um, I don't remember. I have a lot of things. How will I remember how much I bought them? I don't remember. Seriously. Let's look at your hair. Your hair costs how much? How much did it cost? Tell me. I bought this. This is 100 jam. Are you sure? Is it 100, 150 or 120? I don't remember, but it's 100 and something. What's the most expensive hair you've ever bought? Oh, 
Is this the hundred? You the hundred nah. Hundred nah. You don't go above it. Mm -mm. You know, I live according to what I can afford. Me in person, me the pressure, me see me hustle. Just because someone is buying an expensive wig, me cut it. Because I don't know how the person is earning their money. So I buy what I feel like I can afford. Really? Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a weird question. Hey! <laughs> how weird is it? Very, very weird. Okay. <laughs> I had your dating 99 braids. Oh, nah. No. <laughs> no. We are not dated. Um, uh, um, I, I think I saw you at a program on the 25th. Yeah, I actually came with a friend and, a, and a, her husband. Oh, okay. Yeah. A friend and a husband? Yeah. Is the husband your husband or the friend was your friend? The friend is a friend and a friend. And the husband was? The husband is a friend. Is a brother, a brother, a brother. It's a brother's brother, brother. Eh, uh, hey now. No strings attached. No. But so now you're telling me you are single. Yeah, we are. I'm single. Are you ready to mingle with anyone? No, I'm not. There was this weird question you said on TikTok, but I think I have to ask you. Okay. Have you ever thought of being a lesbian? <gasps> God. To be honest with you, I like. I've thought of it. What really came into your mind, mate? Let's say I was depressed, I was heartbroken, I was uh, I was all over. My mood was all over. I just thought of it. It just came in mind. So have you have you ever um, done that with another person? No, 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 no. You've not started it. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm still I'm still a virgin in the LGBTQ group. I'm I'm still new in it. You've not break your virginity. No, 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 no. But do, do you think it's something I mean good to do? Um, everyone in life has their own choice to make. I know people will come after me for saying this, but I feel like if your mental state is, is okay and you feel you are comfortable here, it makes you happy. No matter what you do in life, people will talk about it. So if it makes you happy, why not? I don't see anything wrong with that. All right, I, I heard you own this place, this shop. No, 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 no. Hey, mm mm. Me ni mi phone No, not yet. Shapeina. Maybe soon, because I'm aiming high for myself. So maybe soon, but for now it's not mine. Looking at the cost of living here in Dubai, do you think of in the next one or two years you want to leave Dubai? Mm-hmm. I want to leave. You want to leave? Mm-hmm. It's too much expensive. It's not because it's not because of how expensive it is. Um I actually have my own personal reasons as a woman and with the age I, I with with my age um I'm not leaving because it's expensive or it's costly, no. Well, let's look at the main purpose why you came to Dubai. Have you achieved it? Mm, yeah. You've achieved it? I think half of it I have. Really? Yeah. What would be your advice to the people who want to travel out outside Afghan or outside Africa? Like I always say, if you are not strong-minded, if you don't have the patience, don't come. If you want to make it within three, four months, don't come. That's all I can say. That's all you can say. That's all. I had some agent meet you, Sika. Hey. <laughs> Two agents, Nedi Misika. First one, Nedi Pakistan, Nibi. 
it was what, what will it happen? What will it happen? Oh, I was looking for a job. So I told him about it and he was like, all these agents that looks for job for people. So I just told him and then he took it. Mm. He ran away with it. He absconded with it. Wow. So uh, let's say um, two years from now, where do we see Isaac? The name Isaac, where do we see the name Oh Isaac? God, I have a lot of dreams. One, I see myself in the medical field. Two, well, the experience I have here in UAE, on this, in this housekeeping field, I want to, uh, I'm thinking of opening a company in Ghana that will be cleaning, washing, weeding, everything. That's another thing. I see myself in this sales business. I see myself higher. Okay. All right. Higher we go, right? Yeah. So um, let's say um, this place. What do you really do in this shop? I just so I come inside. I clean the place. I pray. And then I start Shop selling. Is yeah. What are some of the more, uh, most, I mean, important things that you, you you sell from Africa? Some of the I mean the variety. What are those things? I sell um, cassava dough, gari, um, pepe, African pepe, everything, anything you need. Anything from Africa. Mm hmm. Konkonte. Fufu, like anything. Well, looking at how beautiful you are, and you are in, here in UA selling all this stuff, do you think if you're in Ghana, you will sell all these things? Why not? Mm. I would. I've done crazy jobs than this. What What are some of those crazy jobs? I did housekeeping. Look at how beautiful I'm looking. I did housekeeping. I did housekeeping job. In Ghana? Even, no, in Ghana. In Ghana, I went to do a housemaid job with um a lady in kumasi yeah so i've been hustling since 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 you don't look like somebody who has ever hustled oh like i said you, you sometimes you don't have to look the way you, people would expect you to look it's packaging it's branding i can look crazy sometimes I like can look classic sometimes. So let's let's look at this picture. You see this picture up here. Mm -hmm. You see this picture. Mm -hmm. You were like, um, I think six months or eight months. <laughs> if you see this picture now, what does the picture remind you? Of? Hey, good. It reminds me of my. I was I was young. I was like three months old. So it doesn't remind me of anything. It reminds me of my mom's breast. <laughs> We are going to look at some of your pictures. <laughs> I'm putting this picture on. This next picture. Okay. Look at this one. High school. Huh? High school. Uh huh. It was crazy. That time, Nana, we didn't know how life was, and we were crazy. We were all over the place. So looking at all these pictures, mm -hmm. looking at yourself now. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you have you been? I mean, appre I mean, have you appreciated yourself? Yes. Looking at it, looking at these pictures. I really appreciate myself because hmm, it's been a long way. It's been a long way, and sometimes you just feel like killing yourself in life. Like you get depressed, you you be pushed all over. Sometimes your parents will not be around. Like, ah, I've tried to. I, I, I tap my shoulder, I've tried. God, I've tried for me too. For you not giving up in life? No. I see. Yeah. Your final words, Nayam Pong. As a woman, build yourself. Build yourself. Don't depend on any man. Do not let any man disrespect you because of Kakrebi or the Mawata Frinti. Get something somewhere. I say, or Statisa or Bluffy or Swa. You have something to fall on. 
and don't um, let a man mistreat you because of what he's giving you. Don't, don't, uh, as a woman, and found home to form. No, and my be men city house because of near man kissing it or the mouth. So give yourself a standard on who to baby be your own boss that's all i can say thank you so much for coming on king's tv i'm also grateful for having me <laughs> hey guys. yeah yeah <laughs> Omu ewa akra, omu ben weja, DVL no, anatema community four. Nipe biara wutiye mi biya, upe se okra niyama, se ye phones, se e ye laptops, se ye cars. Na albe dru gana wabra, un tinka boni biya diya, and no one smart base logistics. Gana ha, ube timi afro mo, ewa 0243-192-108. 0243192108. Ope so can you make free Dubai? Ede ba Ghana ha. Now one contact Smart Base Logistics ha. Net is no one printi kosa oni madam CDA. Smart Base Logistics or say God is great. Abu Shafu, I question you both. I kuni. Now me guzo kaya. I say I have say Kings TV. Oko all the social media platforms na I Kings TV. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. YouTube, me like King TV. What you say? My subscribe. It's the Bomodi. I say also Baswa. No one subscribe. What you say? Okay, let me go to guys. I still now. King TV now. King TV entertainment and more positive vibe on Kwa. I'm sure.